community. God has gathered us together to renew our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. So let us stand and greet the presence of Christ in one another. Please join in singing number 548. Number 548. Good morning. Together we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May our loving Lord be with each of you. We pause to pray for an open heart and for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you show us the way. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to live the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you share your life with us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. In glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right and do what is just. For my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. 
The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them will I bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable, just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. Jesus said, please, she said, please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. It takes a little Bible study to warm up to and accept the apostles and this Jesus who sounds so rude, nasty, and insulting. The Canaanite woman approaches Jesus begging him to help her tormented daughter and Jesus first ignores her and then later calls her a dog. Biblical scholars have readily labeled Jesus' actions and words in this story as harsh, insulting, shocking, offensive, chauvinistic, and even brutal. But when these scholars have finished calling a spade a spade, they offer a satisfying and possible explanation of Jesus' curt and cutting comment to the woman. The gospel is certainly not meant to give us men an example of how to treat women by first giving them the silent treatment when they ask for something, and then later when they really get on our nerves or corner us with some clever comebacks to throw them a few morsels or crumbs of understanding, affection, or conversation just so they will be quiet and leave us alone. And the gospel does not promote nagging women either. It is not a lesson in how to nag until you get what you want. Nor does it tell women that you should settle for crumbs of understanding, affection, or conversation from men. Rather, the story can teach us about how human Jesus really was and how he was deeply affected by the Jewish culture and history in which he was raised, just like we are affected by the culture in which we live. The story shows us how Jesus, as a human being like you and me, slowly grew in his understanding of his call and vocation through experiences in his life and ministry. Like God has done sometimes in our own life, God used other people to reveal God's will to Jesus and to expand Jesus' understanding of his own mission. The more we study Jesus' life, it seems very evident that even when he died, Jesus as a human being still did not comprehend completely what God's will was for the church as the kingdom of God on earth. That issue at the heart of today's gospel is clearly stated and concisely stated when Jesus reveals his human understanding of the boundaries of his preaching and healing ministry. Jesus said, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. At this point in his life, that is how Jesus saw his call. And he confirmed that when he sent his apostles out on their first preaching and healing mission and said, 
do not go into pagan territory or a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. For most, if not all, of his ministry days, Jesus' understanding was that his mission was to be exclusively among the Jews. That idea was firmly planted in the minds of the apostles also, who showed the Canaanite woman no respect either by saying to Jesus, send her away, she keeps calling out after us. For them, love your neighbor as yourself was thought to apply to every Jew and even to the Jewish outcasts, not to everyone in the world. After Jesus' death and resurrection, Jesus' humanity was glorified and he understood God's will in entirety. To believe that Jesus knew everything from the beginning or as soon as he was baptized is to deny or diminish his humanity. The human experience is that we do not know everything. So like Jesus, we slowly grow in our understanding of our call or vocation. Who knows what your marriage will ask of you? Who knows what your parenting will ask of you or what your job or your profession will ask of you? That is a human experience not knowing until it happens. Even after Jesus' ascension, it was some time, years before Jesus knocked Paul off his horse and made him the apostle to the Gentiles after persecutions had begun. Then it took a major fight between Peter and Paul for Peter to be convinced that the Gentiles were to be part of the church. Peter did not pick that up from Jesus, even though Peter and the apostles had experiences where Jesus sometimes occasionally recognized faith in a non-Jewish person like he did in today's gospel. The term dog was an ugly nickname that the Jewish people gave to a pagan, a Gentile. And Jesus obviously picked that up from his culture and religion and used it in ordinary conversation. Since a dog does not discriminate between clean or unclean meat, which the Jewish people were very serious about, the pagans and the Gentiles who ate all kinds of meat indiscriminately were put on the same level as a dog. After Jesus says that the Canaanite woman was not on his list of people to help, this dog was smart enough to use an old trick. She said to go ahead and treat her like a dog and toss a few of the table scraps of mercy and healing her way. As he did in a few other situations with non-Jews, Jesus recognized her great faith, but this was the exception not something predominant in his ministry. Even in the early church, from Peter on down, it took time to break open people's minds and hearts to include people different than themselves. It still goes on today. No matter how different you are from others, thank you so much for being here so that we can pray together. As was said in the first reading, God's house is to be a house of prayer for all peoples. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us bring our special prayers for this week before our God. For the church, that may, we may become to know greater unity with other Christians, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For policies in our country that reflect openness and compassion to those in need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are afraid to ask for help because they are considered to be different, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are part of this faith community that we may recognize our prejudices and learn to welcome every stranger, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions written in our book of prayer requests and for those we hold in our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And we also pray for the repose of the soul of Ed Parada, who will be honored today for his good works in our community. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask you to hear our prayers, which we bring to you today in your Son's name, Christ, our loving Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 522, number 522.
remain seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our sacrifice, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now together let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please join in singing number 503. Number 503.
Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless each of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended now. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Amen. Have a great week. Please join in singing number 534. Number 534. Accept the love.